Today we're going to talk about Etsy and I really want to address the topic of you shouldn't be buying on Etsy. Here comes Ziggler, went for the famous sir, Randy Orton counter. Oh! You know, uh, there's a lot of vendors on there and so I really recommend buying off of the platform with the vendors that you like. And today we're going to really cover, you know, how they have some of the highest fees. They've also allowed international vendors to flood the platform, which has really had a negative impact on North American vendors. And last but not least, they have bad clients. <laughs> Needs to be addressed. We're going to address it. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned for that. And my name is Alec Flex. Let's jump into it. For those of you who have been watching my channel for quite a while, we are going to be launching a new vlog channel where I'm going to be doing more in behind the scenes and more fashion, travel, beauty curation because it's something that I'm really passionate about and I kind of want to explore more into that. So do stay tuned. We are going to be launching a new vlog channel. So uh, yeah. All right. So let's just jump into my number one tip before you can get started into the breakdown of why I don't like Etsy. What I always recommend is buying from the vendors off of the platform because you don't want to penalize the vendors. There's a lot of good artists on there, but what I would always recommend is finding them off of the platform. So you can probably find their Instagram or their Facebook account and message them and say, hey, this is the product that I want to buy and then just buy it from them, you know, directly off of their website. A really easy thing if you can't find their website is literally just screenshot the product, go into Google. There's that little icon with a camera on it. You can actually take that screenshot and upload it into Google and it's going to pull basically the person's listing off of their website. So it's the fastest way to find them. It's the fastest way to find the product that you're looking for. Most vendors have the same, you know, pictures across platforms. So they're going to be able to find each other. This is a perfect segue fees. Etsy has some of the highest fees in any other platform. Like I think right now for Shopify, I pay about 3.5% transaction fees plus like a monthly fee of like $50, which can seem high for first time vendors, but it's really not so bad in comparison to what I'm going to show you now. So Etsy right off the bat takes 20 cents per listing that you list, which doesn't seem so bad until you have the 6.5% tra transaction fee, which is not only for the item itself, but it's also on top of shipping, on top of gift wrapping. After the transaction fee, they have a 3% processing fee, so processing the credit card. If it's an international sale, like for me, most of my sales are in the US, we are in Canada, there's an additional 2.5% conversion fee. So as you can see, we're already at 12%. So it's like four times the price of Shopify but it doesn't stop there. Etsy has this program for vendors that sell over $10,000 a year, which is probably most vendors who do this as like an actual career or full-time gig. They will charge 12% for ads. They will charge 12% for running ads on your products. So how does that work? They basically take any of like your probably top selling products and they will then advertise them for you on Google, on the Etsy platform itself, basically any other related websites that they think that, you know, they can make a sale from. But the problem is that 12% is kind of high on top of the other 12%. That means that you're basically at 24% per sale. So if you make a hundred dollar sale, they're taking $24, which is huge. In fine jewelry, that is huge. We don't have the margins for that. You know, if I'm gonna get 24% of my sale taken, I'm giving it away for free. Like I'm just not going to sell. And this is something that is not opt outable, if that makes sense. You cannot, you can opt in, but you can't opt out. They are basically forcing vendors to do this without the choice and it's even to the point where let's say one year you make, I don't know, a hundred thousand, that 12%, those ads will opt in, right? But let's say the next year you make $8,000, they're still going to be your, as soon as you enter into that program, you cannot get out of it. So even if there's a year that you make less than 10,000, like let's say you need to take a sabbatical and you're only working like a, a bit of the time of the year, those small sales that you make is still going to have that 24%. So it's kind of not great. Like for me personally, I want to be able to choose if I'm going to make sales, if I'm going to run ads or not. I don't like it in the sense that I can't see any of the analytics of what's selling, what they're pushing. You know, I can't choose the products that I want to push. You know, if I'm going to 
run ads, I'm gonna run ads on products that have a little bit of a better margin. Ultimately, it's just really not great how little control and how high you're paying just to be able to use this platform. The second reason why I don't like Etsy is because they don't limit the vendors to North America. You know, obviously Etsy is an international platform, so you have vendors and buyers from all around the world, but it creates a problem because you know, for us here in North America, our production fees and costs and cost of labor are so much higher than, you know, let's say in China where they're being mass produced at very low labor costs, at very low production costs, very low rent costs. It's just not even comparable. Like I'll have clients slide into my DMs being like, oh, hey, can you make this for me? What would you charge me? I say, yes, I can make it for 1500. And, and then they're telling me, oh, well, I can buy it for 800 over here. And it's like, I can't even compete. I can't even compete. And as a result, I have seen so many vendors lower their prices in, in order to try to at least make a sale. But at the end of it, you know, this is a platform that's supposed to be supporting vendors and supporting artisans, but they're no longer able to support themselves because they're having to gauge their prices and gauge their 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 labor costs like it's just not sustainable and etsy needs to step up and create some sort of you know divide between buyers and sellers across the world like it just doesn't make sense and like even just a side note if people are having to bring the cost of their products down the quality is going to go down as well like i see some people selling jewelry and like the prices that they're selling them at like it's very obvious that they're going to have to cut corners. They're gonna to have to cut corners in labor. You know, they're gonna be using ways of reproducing things really quickly and inexpensively. And that always cuts down the quality of the product. So, you know, finding the cheapest product may sound good in theory, but it's not necessarily always the best. It's also a common problem for overseas vendors. What they'll actually do is they'll go into Etsy's top selling products and then replicate them for half of the price. And, you know, some of these products, like there are products that are very generic and like, who cares? You know, like, let's say like a halo engagement ring, that's nothing unique. Everybody has halo engagement rings. You know, it's, you don't even have to like, it th that doesn't matter. But I know I have friends who have very unique designs that they developed and that they made themselves and then people start reproducing them at half the cost and they reported it to Etsy because it's like plagiarism, right? Somebody spent so much time working on a design and developing it like that should belong to that person and Etsy just doesn't care. It doesn't matter how many times that they flagged it or they, they tried to get in touch with them to try to protect their intellectual property, Etsy just doesn't care. So for you as a shopper, I would recommend to try to find the person who did the original product because it's just, I would be very upset. It's just not okay. So do share this with anybody who does shop on the platform. This needs to be said. Etsy has some of the worst clients than any other platform. I think they breed bad clients and the reason why I'm saying this is because Etsy is a platform that really promotes the idea of working directly with the artisan. They promote, you know, like the interactions between, you know, the client and the vendor. And this is something that I don't see anywhere else. You know, I sell on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Etsy, on our Shopify website. If you go on Etsy, it is like insane the amount of bombardment of questions and dialogue that we get unnecessarily from clients. I will have, you know, a 300, I have actually had to remove all of my listings under a certain, I don't think I really sell anything under $350 anymore. And even at that, like what was happening is there like, it's like a $200 listing. And then people just will literally message me five times a day for two weeks straight. And it doesn't make any sense. It's a $200 listing. All the descriptions are in the description section. I make everything super clear with the dimensions, you know, the types of materials used, how it's worn. All of these things are gonna be in the description. And yet I will still have clients emailing me questions after questions after questions. And they almost have this approach of talking to you like they're your friend, which I think is fine, but 
this is not something that is an isolated event. It happens all the time where clients just bombard you with emails and questions and clients need to understand that yes, we're here for you, but at the same time, there needs to be kind of like a separation of like what is acceptable and what is not. And for Etsy clients, it just goes way off the deep end. I will literally, you know, get so many emails from clients in comparison to I'll have a $10,000 order and I'll maybe email me once, twice, three times for like a two week period. So it is startling and clients need to realize that those kinds of things are not okay and I feel like Etsy really promotes it. Anyways, I'd really love to know what your experience has been selling or buying on Etsy. It's one of the top four e-commerce platforms in the world. I think it's like behind Google, Amazon, eBay. It's up there. People are buying on it. So I'd love to know your experiences, your thoughts. Are you a vendor or a consumer? And uh, yeah, my name is Dominic Flux. Thanks for watching. If you like short form content, we do have our TikTok Dominic Flux and I'll see you next time. Bye.